Hello everybody. So today I wanted to show you how you could take your Windows 10 Home 64-bit edition and upgrade it to Windows 11 Home 64-bit edition even if your computer doesn't support it. Maybe your processor isn't fully supported by Windows 11. Maybe the RAM's not fully supported. Maybe you don't have Secure Boot or the TPM 2.0 on your computer. Whatever the reason may be, I wanted to show you how you can upgrade it to Windows 11 and get it running on your computer. So let's go over now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to the internet. And I'm going to use Microsoft Edge, which is right down here. But if you don't see it right there on your taskbar, just go ahead and click on the start button and then scroll down. And then right there under the M's, you should have Microsoft Edge. So go ahead and open that up. And then up here at the top, in this bar, I'm going to type in duckduckgo.com. Now you can use any search engine you want to. So if you would prefer Bing, Yahoo, Google, any of those, feel free to use those. I just was going to use DuckDuckGo. Now here on the search engine, I'm going to type in Windows Health Check App. And you can see it showed up in the list. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then... The very first result says how to use the PC Health Check app. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, it says if you don't have PC Health Check installed, you can install it by going to, and it gives you this website. So I'm going to click on that link right there, and then it automatically downloads it for you. And it has the icon right up here at the top where it says downloads. See, there's a little folder where it'll open up the downloads folder. So I'm going to click on that. Now, for any reason you didn't have that on your computer, you can go down here to the File Explorer, click on it, and then once File Explorer opens up, you can click on Downloads, and it'll take you to the same place. Now here is the Windows PC Health Check Setup. So I'm going to right click on it and install it. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and accept the terms in the license agreement and click install. Now this is not a very big program, it only should take a few seconds to install, but we're gonna go ahead and open it. Okay. Now I'm going to close the downloads window because we don't need it at the moment. And then here it says introducing Windows 11 and it kind of gives you an overview of the computer. Well, what I want to do is I want to click on check now to see if I can install Windows 11. Okay, so as you can see, the processor is supposedly not going to be supported with Windows 11. So I was going to show you how you can install it on your computer so that you won't have that problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to close the X here. And I'm going to click on the X here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download the Windows 11 ISO file. Now the, win the reason I'm downloading the Windows 11 ISO file is it will allow me to install Windows 11 on the computer after we make some changes. What we're going to do is we're going to go back up here to duckduckgo.com and press enter. And then here I'm going to type in download Windows 11 ISO. And then I'm going to press enter. Okay, now I'm going to click on this link where it says download Windows 11 and it's from Microsoft.com. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and it says download Windows 11 disk image ISO for X64 devices, which is just 64-bit devices. And then I'm going to click underneath select download. And I'm going to select the multi-edition ISO. I'm going to click on download. 
Now here, it wants to know your language. So of course, you would want to pick your language. I'm going to choose English United States, and then I'm going to click Confirm. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on this button right here that says 64-bit download, and it's going to start downloading that file. Now, I'm going to fast forward it so you don't have to watch it download this in its entirety. But in the meantime, you can let that finish, and then you can go ahead and do the registry editor, which we'll go ahead and do now, because that's going to take about three minutes for it to finish download. So let's go over here to the start menu, click on it one time, and then type in reg edit, which is short for registry editor. And then we're going to go ahead and click on run as administrator. Now, if you get this prompt that says you want to allow the registry editor to make changes to your device, go ahead and click on yes. Now here, I'm going to go to the H key local machine and then I'm going to go to the system and then I'm going to go to setup and then I'm going to click on the one that says MO setup but as you can see I don't have one that says MO setup so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the top and click on edit new key and then I'm going to type in a capital M lowercase o capital S, and then the rest of it's lowercase, E-T-U-P, and then I'm going to press enter. Now that just created that new key for us. Now I need to go in and I need to create a couple of D words. So I'm going to either click on edit again, or right click over here in the white space, click on new, and then click on D word 32 bit. Now this is kind of a long one, but we're going to type in allow with a capital A, upgrades with a capital U, and then with with a capital W, unsupported with a capital U, and then capital T, capital P, capital M, capital O, lowercase r, and then capital C, capital P, capital U. Now, don't worry, if you don't want to have to type all that in, I put it down below in the video description, so you can just copy and paste. And then you just press enter here, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to put a 1. And then I'm going to click OK. Now we need to create one more. I'm going to right click, create a new D Word 32 bit, and I'm going to call this one bypass with a capital B and then RAM all capital capital R capital A capital M and then check with a capital C and then I'm going to press enter and again I put that link down below in the video as well so you can just copy and paste it and then you're going to double click on it put a one and click OK now I did go ahead and include that one you may not need it you may have plenty of RAM on your system. But if for some reason you wanted to install Windows 11 without the minimum amount of RAM, then you can go ahead and do that bypass RAM check and it'll let you install it on less than four gigs of RAM. 3.3, 32, you can put it on as little as you want. I would highly recommend that you do at least four. Even at four, you're, you're kind of running on bare minimum just because when you try to open web pages, it gets really slow. But I wanted to show you that just in case you decide you want to do it. Okay, now I wanted to show you two more things that we want to add to the register. So these will allow you to bypass it if for some reason these two do not. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to HQ Local Machine, which we're already in. And then we're going to go down to System. And then we're going to go to Setup right here. And then under Setup, we are going to create another key. We're going to click Edit, New, Key. And this one, we're going to call Lab Config. And it's got a capital L and a capital C. 
and then we're going to press enter. Now over here, I'm going to create a new D word 32 bit and we're going to call this one bypass secure boot check. And then it's got a capital B, a capital S, a capital B and a capital C. And again, I included that one down below in the video description so that you can just copy and paste. And then I'm going to press enter and I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to put a one and then I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to right click again, go to new D word 32. And this one is going to be bypass TPM check. Now again, the B is capital. The T, the P, the M, and the C are all capital. But I put a link down below so you can copy and paste it if you wanted to put that into your registry and not have to type it in. And then you just press enter, double click on it, put a one, and then click OK. Now, at this point, you've done everything you need to to the registry to bypass the setup. So here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the registry. I'm going to close the Microsoft Edge and then I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer to make sure that all those registry changes take effect. And then if you had noticed just a moment ago, it had finished downloading the Windows 11 ISO. That's why I could go ahead and restart it. But you don't want to restart yours until your Windows 11 ISO file has finished downloading. So once this comes back up, we'll go ahead and continue and I'll show you how you can update it to Windows 11 Home. Okay, so my Windows 10 computer came back up after restarting from making all of those registry changes. So now I'm gonna go into the File Explorer, which is right down here on the taskbar. But if you don't see it on your taskbar, that's okay. Just go over to the Start button and right click on it and go into File Explorer. And then when it pulls up the File Explorer, we're gonna go into the Downloads folder and then we're gonna double click on our ISO file we just downloaded. Now yours is gonna look similar to this, but it may not be exactly the same. It will say Win 11. It may or may not say 24H2, it may be 23H2, and maybe something in the future like 25H2, 26H2. And then it may have a different language here. It may not be English, but then it will say X64. But go ahead and double click on that file and then if it prompts you, go ahead and click open. Now here, what we want to do is we want to double click on the setup file. And then it wants to know if you want to make changes to your app with the Microsoft installer. And this is going to make a lot of changes <laughs> because it's going to upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. So go ahead and click on yes. And then the setup will open and it's going to start preparing everything for you. Now here, you can choose whether or not you want to make the installation better. It's just going to send feedback to Microsoft. I'm going to leave it off for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now it may check for Windows updates. And if it does, it may want to restart the setup. So just let it go ahead and do that. We'll give that a few moments to finish checking for updates and I'll be right back. Okay, so as you saw, it did close the setup because it had some updates for the setup that needed to be installed or implemented for it to be included with the setup. But if you'll notice down here at the bottom, it didn't put the setup at the front. So we just have to click on it. Now here, it wants to know if you have read the notices and license terms. So we're going to go ahead and click on accept. You can read through them if you want to. I'm just going to click accept for now. And then it wants to check what you want to keep. And then it's going to check everything to make sure it's ready to go on the computer. So we'll give that just a few moments. Okay. So it just finished checking for updates. It took quite a bit of time and yours may too, but don't worry, it will finish. 
So now it says it needs our attention. This PC doesn't meet the minimum requirements because remember, I bypassed everything. The TPM check, the CPU check, the secure boot, the RAM, everything. And so now all you have to do is just click on accept. And then it should continue on with the Windows 11 setup so that you can install it on this computer. Even though it doesn't officially meet the requirements, you can still install it on this computer. So let's give that just a little bit more time and I'll be right back. Hopefully after it's got a Windows 11 on there, but it may ask me a few more questions. Okay, so this looks like it may be the last question. So now it just wants to know, do you want to do anything different? Because it's going to install Windows 11 Home, and it's going to keep the personal files and apps on the computer. So I don't need to change anything. I'm going to leave it just like it is and go ahead and click on Install. And now, as you can see, it is installing Windows 11. So that's going to take quite a bit of time, but I'll fast forward it for you all. And I'll be right back with it up and running on Windows 11. Okay, so as you can see, it finished installing the Windows 11 Home Edition on this computer. So if I click on start and then I go to the settings and then after settings pulls up, if I go into system and scroll down to about, you'll see right there, it's got the Intel Core i7-7700 processor with 4 gigs of RAM and it was able to get that updated to Windows 11 Home. So I hope that was helpful on how you can upgrade your Windows 10 Home computer to Windows 11 Home and get it up and running. Even if the CPU doesn't meet the requirements, you don't have enough RAM to meet the requirements, you don't have Secure Boot turned on, or you don't have the correct TPM version, you can get it up and running as long as you follow those registry key changes that I showed you in the video. If you do have any questions or problems with this, please let me know down below in the comments and I will be more than happy to get back to you about it. And if there's a video that you would like for me to create, please let me know that down below in the comments as well and I will do my best to create that video for you. And as always, because you all do such a great job, if you can, Hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep putting out more great content like how do I upgrade my Windows 10 home computer to Windows 11 home and do it on unsupported computers and I'll be glad to keep putting up all this great content for you all. Thanks so much everybody. I really appreciate you all. I hope you have a great day. Take care. God bless and I'll see you all next time. Bye.